Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Starring Clark Gregg Ming-Na Wen Chloe Bennett Elizabeth Hensridge Henry Simmons Natalia Cordova Buckley Jeff Ward so real quick, I just want to say that if you're not subscribed, please do so because we are so close to 400 and it would be amazing to reach that maybe by the final of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But anyway, the final is finally upon us and this will be my final prediction video for the show unfortunately. I'm so excited to see what happens, but also so so sad that the show is going to be over forever. We can just hope that we see these characters on our screens again at some point in the MCU, which honestly at this point is kind of looking like it could be pretty likely. But I do need to throw out a quick disclaimer because pictures and plot details from the final two episodes did leak right after episode 11 aired. I have not seen any of those leaks and I urge you all to avoid them too because I've seen a lot of people say that they were annoyed they seeked them out because they would have rather waited and seen these things happen in the episode itself. But if you have seen them, please try not to drop them in the comments to spoil people and if you do want to discuss them below then just make sure you do heavy spoiler tag them. But yeah, if you want to avoid them just be vigilant, we only got another 24 hours to go. But in this video, I'm going to be discussing what I believe may happen in the final episode, maybe throw in some hopes, but I'll be trying to keep this strictly in the predictions of things I genuinely think will happen. Plus, since my last prediction video, which was on the first promo for the final, we've had two more trailers come out, and hell, by the time I record and upload this, there could already have been another trailer, maybe even another official sneak peek. But out of the two trailers, things we've seen are... The team using a prototype of Fitz's tech that stops Gordon back in Season 2, Episode 22. They did mention that they had something like this in the most recent episode. And so in the recent final trailer, we see the team use it on Garrett, which I also believe is our first official look at Garrett in this episode. We also have a physical look at Sybil, so obviously she gets a new body that isn't a TV. And we also see something to do with the temple from the Season 6 final, so it's likely we'll have some time travel shenanigans to the Season 6 final. I actually have no idea how this will work though, because if we go by MCU time travel logic, traveling back to the Season 6 final shouldn't matter, because changing anything would just place them in a different timeline. And honestly, it's at times like these where I kind of just wish Agents wasn't in the MCU so they aren't burdened by Endgame's weird time travel logic. But it's also possible that shot of the temple blowing up is just a flashback to Season 6 temple stuff, since Episode 11 has already done some flashbacks and reused scenes from old Fitz and Simmons stuff. Something that will likely tie into the temple stuff is that the monolith story is still somewhat open. That hasn't shown up in a while, and it's pretty much the only plot point from the last two or three seasons that hasn't returned at all yet. I have seen a cool theory all over the place that says the monoliths are different in that you, if you travel through time using the monolith, then you can change time and it doesn't create a new timeline. Now, this is actually a pretty interesting and cool theory, plus I think it's likely at this point that we'll find out that the remnants of the monolith were actually used by Fitz and Simmons to create the Zephyr's time drive, very similar to how the pair created the time machine in early season 5 that they used to get home from 2091, but it's also possible the Chronicoms use some of it in their time drive, but I'm much less sure on that one. But in terms of the monolith doesn't change time theory, I do like it, I do think it's interesting, and with some tweaking I really do think this could be a foolproof theory, but there's something stopping me from believing in it just yet. Mainly the way that the team gets home from 2091 is heavily built around the time monolith, and we know that Deke's 2091 timeline still exists out there somewhere, since he doesn't disappear. So that means that even though they used the monolith to travel through time, and even though they did successfully stop the destruction of the Earth, the team didn't erase the other timeline, which means they didn't change time. So for that reason, if we go by current show logic, the monolith isn't any different time travel wise. But like I said, they can easily tweak this, they can come up with a whole new story point if they want. I don't know, just say that with all the monoliths combined, it's powerful enough for them to be able to change time, whereas in Season 5, they only used the time monolith, which meant it was only powerful enough to send them to a new timeline. I know this would just be a random plot point put there so that they can get out of an annoying situation, but if it cleared up all of these time shenanigans, then I would honestly be perfectly fine with it, and it would still gel just fine with established lore and tie up plot points leading all the way back to Season 2 since the first time we've seen a monolith. But wow, when I started making this video, I really did not think I'd spend so long talking about the monoliths. But yeah, I still stand by my prediction from last video that episode 12 will have Team Sousa, Mac and Daisy get on board the Zephyr, they'll rescue Deke and Gemma, while Nathaniel and Co will depart the Zephyr quickly, with Daisy and Nathaniel fighting on the Chronicom ship, 
while Colson and team capture Garrett on the ground, and then I think Daisy beats Nathaniel at the end of episode 12, and then the whole team rendezvous on Earth in the Crazy Canoe, where they all talk about the final mission, and then episode 13 will be very time travel focused. It will be have us fully dealing with the Chronicoms. I also think that whatever is the deal with Fitz, we'll find out in episode 13. And that's when we'll see Ian. I just really hope he's still out there and that he does a cool ass return to save the team and that he does get to interact with the team. Because let me be completely honest real quick. If we waited a whole season to see him for us to not have any interaction between Fitz and anyone other than Gemma and for us to just find out that he got to live his life away from everyone and with Gemma and maybe their daughter, I will be quite annoyed. Maybe enough to sour a, a decent bit of the season on me. I just think that with a lot of the build up, a lot of the teases and a lot of the hype, for them to go down this path wouldn't be a great way to to kind of reward us for all of that. It, it just, it doesn't leave me with hope, I guess. Now, I'm not saying I'm expecting this to happen, but honestly, at this point, I think the scenario of him ending up being, being old, living his life, being dead, whatever you want to call it, is just as likely as him physically showing up to help and see the team. But my absolute hope is that when the moment is most dire, Fitz shows up out of nowhere to physically save the team, kind of like his entrance in Season 5 Episode 4. But there's quite a lot that I have no idea how it will play out. I have no idea how the hell they'll write off Sousa, because I can't see him sticking around if Daisy becomes Director of Shield or Sword, but I also can't see Daisy retiring. I 100% expect Daisy to end the show in charge of something big, so that the door is wide open for her to return down the line. But Sousa doesn't fit into this scenario in my opinion. But I also don't expect him to die, and I also don't see the 2012 New York scenario happening anymore. I'm generally confused on how his story will play out, but it's exciting to really not know. Deke is another character I'm crazy oblivious on, because I feel like if he was gonna die this season, then it would've already happened. One wild theory I have is that Nathaniel actually will kill him towards the end of Season 7 Episode 11, just before Daisy and Nathaniel fight, which will make the final episode that much more depressing and also give the team one last blow before the final battle. But as was kind of a weird prediction thought I have, I actually don't know if I expect that to happen or not. But, um, this is something I'm thinking about. In terms of Gemma forgetting fits, I'm fully expecting this to be cleared up or sorted out within the first part of the final. I don't see this taking up a lot of the episodes. If it does end up somehow being something that lasts through all of 12, then I'll genuinely be surprised and not in a good way. In terms of returning characters, I honestly still have no fucking idea what they're doing here. I'm pretty sure Flint and Piper have been confirmed for the final for a while, and that would line up perfectly with the Temple stuff, since that is exactly where we last saw them. But in terms of the dozen other characters that myself and so many other people in the final would like to see, I have no idea. I'm not too hopeful and I'm not expecting much. But I also have this weird feeling about possibly seeing a bunch of returns in a final battle or something. But um, I, I honestly do try not to, I try my hardest not to compare DC and Marvel stuff. But for a lot of people who subbed and started watching these since Shield's final season, and not a lot of my older DC videos, my other all-time favourite show along with this is Arrow. Arrow was actually my all-time favourite TV love, with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. being a very close second. And it's super interesting to see the different approaches to the show's final season. Like, Arrow aired their final season at the end of last year and beginning of this year, and they went absolutely all out in getting multiple returning characters for every episode of the final season, to the point that when all was said and done, there was only like two or three big characters from the show's entire eight year run that didn't make an appearance in some form. S.H.I.E.L.D. on the other hand hasn't had many returns at all, which is really surprising, but they've also still managed to have some extremely solid episodes nonetheless. But anyway, I kind of started rambling there, I'll leave this here. Um, what do you think is going to happen in the final episode? Do you have any wild predictions? Anything you think is definitely going to happen? And uh, you look forward to it? Are you sad about it? All of that sort of stuff. And please remember to subscribe so we can hit 400 soon. And please like, share and all of that. And I hope you have an amazing day.